Now, uh, after Facebook, going back into mobile technology again, we know that there are a lot of cyber crimes which you know can take place with smartphones. We now have uh, Mr. Manish Chasta, who will be giving us a talk on Android forensics. He is a CISSP, CHFI, and certified digital evidence analyst, who is a principal consultant with uh, Inface Consultants. He has more than five years of experience in this domain. And uh, he's currently managing a team of information security experts and engineers and uh, has done a vast research on mobile application security. He's also handling uh, prime customer relations of his firm. He's authored numerous security articles for the Clubhack uh, magazine and for Palisade. He's audited uh, over 200 uh, mobile and web applications in the areas of internet banking, co-banking, healthcare, CRM, telecom, <coughs> and a lot more. Uh, over to Mr. Manish. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Manish Chasta. I'm working with uh, Industries Consulting as a principal consultant. So it seems everyone is interested in uh, hacking Facebook accounts and uh, other uh, exploitations. Uh, and most of guys here sitting are uh, security professionals, and they are here to prevent all the attacks. So here I am presenting a concept of discovering the uh, any exploitation or any hacking incident. So the agenda of the talk will be, first we'll have a short introduction to Android. So I would like to thank Anand, so which have already covered most of the part in his talk. Then we'll see how to root the Android. Uh, routing is important in the uh, in doing the forensics. So we'll see how to root the Android, then we'll see the uh, how how sees the Android phone. Then we'll see the typical forensic steps to carry out the forensic activity, and then we'll see how to maintain the chain of custody, and then we'll discuss some uh, Indian cyber laws to uh, come which covers the uh, any cyber crime. So Android is one of the most widely used OS present in the market. It is developed by Google and it is maintained by Android Open Source Project. So it provides a complete software for the mobile, uh, including OS, middlewares, and applications. So it's Android's presence in the market. According to Gartner report, Android captured 36% market share in quarter one of the 2011, and I'm sure it, it will cross for uh, it will uh, cross 45% by the end of this financial year. So here's the other Symbian is second, and iOS and then RIM. So Android is also listed as the best-selling smartphone worldwide by the Canalys. So is the architecture of the Android. So it, the red part is the kernel or low-level tools or the drivers are here. And then the green part is libraries. Then the uh, yellow one is the heart of the Android. It's a Android runtime. It consists of core libraries and Dalvik VM. Then above this, application framework and above all applications. So I will have a quick look to the Android architecture. Android uses uh, uh, Linux 2.6 kernel and its system services like security, memory and process management, network stack, and provide, uh, provide the drivers to access the hardware like camera, Bluetooth, audio, video, Wi-Fi, and all. So its Android runtimes. Uh, consists of core libraries and, and Delvic VM. So core libraries are written in Java. So they provide the Java-like uh, Java functionality to Android device. And it, it is interpreted by, or it, it will be run in the Delvic VM. So Delvic VM is a Java-based VM. It's a lightweight substitute to JVM. And unlike JVM, DVM is a register-based virtual machine. DVM is optimized to run on limited main memory and less CPU, CPU users and let resources, it, it uses less use resources as well. So Java code gets converted into DX to be able to run in the uh, Android platform. Each service or each application will have a separate instance of DVM. So SQLite is, it is the one of the main component in the SQL, uh, sorry, in the Android for the forensic, investiga uh, forensic investigation. So a lot, lot more critical information you will get in the SQLite database only. So SQLite database is a widely used lightweight database. It is again an open source and 
it, it is uh, used by most of the uh, mobile operating systems like iPhone, Android, Symbian, Web OS. Even uh, Mozilla, Google Chrome uses this SQLite database. It is a free to use and open source. It is. Uh, it requires zero configuration, zero setup or administration needed, and a complete database is stored in a single cross platform disk file. So, how an Android system can be used in system, uh, cyber crime? So, uh, like whatever you do today with your laptop, you can do with your smartphones on, uh, also. Most of the financial institutes, banking institutes, they are come up with their mobile applications. So now you can even do the financial transaction with your mobile. So mobile uh, today mobile can carry the use volume of data also. So it can be used in software theft or uh, like uh, in a recent incident in Bangalore, uh, one lady was caught in a software theft crime. So what she did, she uh, she had an iPhone, she copied, she copied all the source code, uh, she was not happy with the company, so she all copied all the source code of uh, particular software and she took out that from the company. So what what was there? there? There was a security check also, so where they used to check all the USB and all. So what she did, she copied and she deleted the data. And when security checked the device, there was nothing in the device. And when she came back to home, she recovered all the deleted file. So but luckily, uh, cyber police was able to disc uh, find that uh, particular phone on, and they did, uh, they discovered the evidences from the phone. So it can be used in terrorism activity also. If a phone is found in a, any terrorist activity, then it is a treasure to the investigators. They can find the call logs, SMS, even they are deleted, and the other del uh, other information like if some map is there or the other uh, information are there like any crypto files, techno files, or all. So it can be used in, uh, like software theft, it can be used in pornography or child pornography cases also. In financial crime, as I said, uh, uh, today most of the transactions are happening through mobiles also. So it, it can be used in financial crime as well. And sexual harassment cases, uh, same way we can have the emails, even if it is deleted, then SMS, call logs and everything which can prove the sexual harassment cases also. It can be used in murder or other criminal activities, like if you have heard about the Arushi murder case where police were able to find her cell phone and uh, able to discover some uh, critical information from that. So here we look at the typical process of the forensics. So uh, we'll see how to seize a device, uh, Android device particularly, and then we'll create a one-to-one one one image of the device and then recover, we'll recover the uh, useful data from the device and then we'll analyze the device to discover the evidences and then we'll see how to maintain a chain of custody and why it is important. So first uh, we'll see uh, forensics will start from the seizing the device. So when you find a cell phone or smartphone in any crime, in the crime site, so first if it is off then don't turn it. Let it be off. If it is on, don't uh, uh, let it on and don't uh, off it and it keep it charged so that you don't lose the any critical data. If you switch off the phone, you might lose some uh, critical data. Some critical data can be there in the cache file or some temporary files. So take the snap uh, snapshot of the display of the device and uh, uh, take the snapshot of the crime scene also and seize the, all the devices you found there like uh, memory card, cable or earphone, whatever is there and label and evidence, level all evidence and document everything. So this will help you in proving your evidences in the court. So now we'll see creating a one is to one event. Uh, first, why we need to create create an image? Why don't we work on the primary evidence? Uh, that is because if if we'll work on the primary evidence, then that is not admissible in the court. You can't present that evidence in the court as you can't work on the primary evidence. So you need to create an image. And one, what is one is two one image? Uh, if you simply copying or simply backing up your uh, cell phone, so that what it, what will happen? Only visible data, visible to OS, that data will be copied or back up to the target device. So what happen in one is to one device? You copy the raw data. One byte by byte uh, copying will be there. Suppose uh, you have two GB of memory card and one GB is, uh, uh, data is there. If you just copy your backing up, one GB data will be there on the target. Um, uh, target device, and if you'll be attacking uh, full one is to one image, then it will uh, have a 
exact 2 GB of image, regardless of the data present in this memory card. So creating image of memory card. So we'll see how to create the uh, image of memory card. So memory card has uh, uh, FAT32 file system. It is easy to create the uh, image of FAT32 file system. In most cases, application won't store any sensitive data in memory card. But yeah, from Android 3.0, and now there is a facility to move the application and its data to the memory cards. So a number of commercials and open source tools are available to do that. So we'll be using Vnex. So here I would like to clear one thing. Uh, I'll be using only open source or evolution versions of the tool. And if you want to present your evidences in the court, then you will have to use the license version. Free tools uh, will not be able to, able to prove the evidence. So we'll see an example of Vnex. So I'm free to use forensics tool. No, it is it is required to take out the memory card. Yeah, that's right. But you have advised. Yes. Yes. So, so, so you are you are, you are taking memory card out. The, yes, uh, pardon. So what is the evidentiary value of that? No, see in in mobile forensics you in mobile forensics you will have to do the separate analysis for the device and separate analysis for the memory card. So what you need to do you need to put out the card and that is required and just create uh, have an image of that so go to the edit mode and it, it make it right protected so now nothing will be written in the now go to tools open the disk select the card and open it create disk image it will create a row image, DD image. You can have other formats also, but DD image is one of the best way to create the image. And if you click OK, so it will create. So it will it will take time. It will take time more than an hour. So what we'll do? I have already created image of this file. So image is there. So the size of the image is 1.84 GB only. So we'll analyze the image later. Yeah. No, but that won't uh, copy your uh, system files or that won't copy system files. You can copy only the memory which is available, internal memory you can say, internal memory of the phone. So that I'll, I'll, I'll show you that also. So Vimex cannot? No. Yes. If you have a browser, a file browser in your cell phone, huh? which has the option to show you the read-only files, now, Fine. And you have the read-only files as a proxy of 30 MB. Hmm. Copy that into your phone memory. The difference specific folder. Again, copy that back into the PC when you're copying the memory card. I didn't get your point. I didn't get your point, Miss. Uh, you are talking about this uh, taking image only? Yeah. Basically, instead of taking the image while there's read-only getting all the files, including the system files, hmm. when you copy it via the master, as he said, hmm. it won't give you the system files. Right? Yeah. So you can copy that into a specific folder from the uh -huh. location that it is into a different folder, make a different folder, copy all those files into that. You already have access to those files, you can copy but, it. But I want system files also. System files and then you can copy it. You can't see see. see, see, if you have if you have deleted something, if you have formatted something or hard disk is cut then uh, that though, that file you cannot copy. If you are taking a bit by bit image, then only it will come from so uh, I know if you if you have this laptop you can get the deleted data. But same thing should be happen with the image also. You should be able to first you cannot work on primary evidence and secondly 
you have to prove that okay this was the primary evidence and this was the second evidence this is the copy of primary so for that what you need to do you need to take the hash of first evidence and then create the image and take the hash of second evidence okay and then both the hash value should be same and we need to present this in the court also that the both the hash value is the same so this is one of the way you can create the image of the memory card there is a problem in the image the empty file hash value doesn't match what do you do then it is your uh, this uh, uh, memory card was not right for it so something was tempered no, so you, you need to you need to create a, uh, another image this problem is a right for uh, device software as well as hardware but the empty file hash doesn't match it does it should not be it should not be okay it should not be i am not a forensics expert in but it should not it should not be if you are using any for the code of law it has been tampered you can you can take that evidence to court i am going to the government to resolve then then i guess you you are in better position to answer yeah Are you an investor, sir? I just want an answer to this. No, if, if hash, no, as per my as per my knowledge, if hash value value is not matched, na, then you can't take that evidence to court. Uh, court uh, that evidence is not admissible to court. As per my knowledge. So better consider this presentation for corporate forensics. We are not going to court court of law. now creating image of the device is uh, bit different than creating uh, image of the memory disk because android file uh, file system uh, yet another flash file system 2 is, is not easy to image and android restrict you to some level you you can view the file to some level you can't go to the android internal directories and structure directory structure at all and most of the information you will find there only so for that you need to do rooting and I, i i would like to clear here that i am using on all open source or free tools so for doing rooting i need to write something on my uh, my android phone so you can't prove this in court so for that you need to do i guess uh, ncase and forensic toolkits are there which can take the exact image of the uh, android machine but for us we need to root it as far as knowledge rooting is required to do to take the android image Once you root it again, altering. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I said, man. So you can't take it to court because in rooting you will write something to your machine. That is for sure. And I, I, I exactly don't know how to take the hash of Android phone even. So, but whatever, whatever mechanism you use. Yes. When you root it, it's not the question of whether it is real or not. Yeah. 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 Yeah.